this section really uh, split into it's actually five parts. Um, I forgot to put the, the other one on the bottom. Uh, do a little bit about give you a bit of information about the renewable heat incentive, um, how that is likely to pan out. Um, a bit on capital expenditure of some of these items. Uh, things that you shouldn't forget, like operating costs. Um, how you might sort of put all that together in terms of establishing a financial appraisal of a system. And then we'll look at some case studies of, uh, of three glasshouse systems that are out there, up and running, working, and how they stack, uh, stack up financially. Um, so renewable heat incentive then, um, I've written down there, it's the biggest influence on biomass heating in recent years. Um, and it will be, as you'll see later on, in terms of what you're going to get back for installing a, a biomass heating system. Um, the aim of it, obviously, to increase the uptake of the renewable heating technologies through financial support. And I don't know how many of you are aware of the feed-in tariff system for solar PV, wind, um, and the like in, in terms of generating electricity. But this is a very similar mechanism in terms of um, people generating renewable heat. It's going to be available for solid um, biomass, most of the things that we've talked about today in quite some depth, soil, wood chip, wood pellets, etc. In the consultation document was also include renewable fuel CHP, biogas and solar thermal. Um, as you can see, the consultation was published in July 2009. The final answer was expected um, in December this year, uh, last year, 2010, but it wasn't forthcoming. The uh, latest is February. I've written down April there because I'm, I'm a bit of a pessimist. Uh, has Daniel got any uh, thoughts on that? And as uh, Matt will testify and Glyn will testify, there are a lot of systems sitting out there waiting and waiting, waiting. They've gone through all the planning, gone through all, all the specifying of the system. They're just waiting for this to come in before they actually hit the go button um, to make sure that it is going to be financially um, beneficial for them. So the main points of the RHI, as per the consultation document, it's going to be paid for each kilowatt hour of qualifying renewable heat output. And the important thing to note is output, not input. So it, it, it makes you think about the most efficient boiler system that you can install. There's going to be different tariffs for different technologies. So there'll be different tariffs for um, biomass burning on, and renewable CHP and solar thermal. But they'll also be scaled for technology size. So a smaller system will be likely to get more per kilowatt hour than a larger system. Just like the feed-in tariff system, they're going to be paid for a set lifetime, and in this case it's 15 years. And it will be only available for new installations installed after the public publication of the consultation document, which was July 2009. Having said that, until we see the final document, these are still not yet confirmed. These are the, the tariff rates as per the consultation document. There is going to be a band 45 to 500 kilowatts, um, 9 pence per kilowatt hour, what they call the DEEM system. So they were going to try and establish the, um, the heat demand of your, of your building and pay you on that to make sure that you weren't wasting heat, you weren't throwing away heat unnecessarily. Um, the chances are that DEEMing is going to, is going to be, um, is, is not going to be the case and everything's going to have to be metered. Um, in the consultation document again, there was solid biomass of that size for anything that was metered over and above the deemed output they were going to pay 2p a kilowatt hour for instead of the 9p. And then the other category above 500 kilowatts, so everything above 500 kilowatts was going to be around that band. Now that 1.6 was designed for renewable CHP or biomass CHP and the 2.5 was for the burning of biomass in, in heat system as well just like we've seen today. Where do we think this is actually going to go? Well. This is the word on the street, um, not cast in stone. There's going to be an extra category put in. So there's an extra category put in the 500 kilowatt to 1 megawatt band. Um, so 45 to 500, five point, uh, between 5 and 6p. 500 to a megawatt, between 3 and 5p. And above a megawatt, 2 to 3p. Um, so as you can see, as you'll see later on, we start putting some uh, economics together. Um, potentially very lucrative. So what is it actually worth? Well, if you're buying straw at £55 a tonne 
um, and you're getting the RHI at two cents a kilowatt, it's actually worth more than the value of the store in terms of, in terms of the fuel cost. Um, wood chip, under a pound a ton, it's got a high, slightly higher energy density, uh, sorry, slightly less energy density, so you would only be getting 60 pence a, sorry, 60 pounds a ton in terms of the RHI. Wood pellets, slightly higher energy density than straw, 85 pounds compared to a fuel cost of 180 pounds. So again, still significant amounts of money off the fuel cost itself. We're going to work through some, some figures a little bit later on, but just to tell you where we're at in a bit of a recap, I'm going to base all my figures to start with on Tim's theoretical 5 hectare nursery with a 3 megawatt boiler, um, which is burning 25,000 megawatt hours of gas a year. The two options, optimise, no CO2 required, running at 80%, and optimise um, with CO2 required, running at 40% heat output from biomass, and we'll see how different that makes the systems um, in, terms of, in terms of the finances. So what influences the costs? Well, it's everything that we've talked about this morning. Um, the type and size of the boiler, all the heat distribution systems, the, the install, everything that you need, maybe a, a heat store system. Um, obviously, your fuel storage and feed systems, whether you need longer term fuel stores, whether you need lots of hard standing to season wood, um, any levels of automation, um, so automatic firing, automatic tube cleaning, etc. Any other buildings, access, and maybe you're going to have to put in a million pound access road for all these trucks that are coming down your road or, or what have you. And any abyss, uh, emission abatement requirements. So if the RHI comes out with some stringent NOx emission targets in there, then that's going to be quite a, an important factor to consider. These are some costs of some systems that um, the Carbon Trust put together a couple of years ago now. How applicable they are to greenhouse uh, and glasshouse systems is is debatable, largely because there are very few, if any, glasshouse systems within that, uh, w within this band. Sorry, not within the band, but within within this group. Um, I've I've put a tool together that tries to calculate the capital or give you an idea of what the capital costs are of a biomass system of various different sizes. I have actually based it on on this curve, um, but I've added, I think. 20% uh, to that cost, the increased complexity and, and the moving on of, of technology and, and, and the increasing cost. But as you can see, further down this end, which is where um, a lot of the bigger nurseries are going to be, one and a half megawatts plus, uh, that's going to be, what, £120 a kilowatt compared to your oil boiler or gas boiler at, uh, might well tell me, £50 a kilowatt? Something like that, so, you know at least twice, if not three times the cost. And the smaller you get, um, the more expensive it gets in terms of cost per kilowatt. So there, biomass systems, three to four times the cost of a fossil fuel system. If we look at Tim's three hectare nursery, uh, sorry, five hectare nursery with a three megawatt system, I've estimated that to be about 480,000 pounds, excluding the heat store, total install cost, which I don't think is unrealistic. You add in a heat store on there, um, a typical glasshouse horticultural heat stores, 250 pounds a cubic metre. If you want 50 cubic metres a hectare, it's going to cost you 62,500 pounds. So, albeit using the smallest biomass system to deliver the, the most heat is the best option, as, he, as Tim was talking about this morning, um, you still got some fixed costs such as buildings and hard standing, etc. Um, depending on how much fuel you need to store, you, you're still going to have to incur those costs. Um, there may well be a marginal extra cost of, of slightly larger boilers, whether that's an influence on, on, on you. And some of these systems come in set sizes. You might want an 1139 kilowatt boiler, but you might only be able to get a 1250. Um, you've just got to consider those options when you're, when you're costing your system out. In terms of fuel costs, these are again based on Tim's, Tim's nursery. Um, I put a couple of scenarios in here. Um, if you're going to run, let's say, 80% wood chip at £100 a tonne and the rest of it is gas, it's going to cost you £680,000 uh, to fuel that nursery for that year. If, on the other hand, you're going to do it with straw, straw being a lot cheaper at £55 a tonne, albeit the same 80 20 split, it's going to cost you £378,000. And compare that to what it is on gas alone, um, let's say 
2.2 pence a kilowatt hour, which I don't think is unrealistic for what people are paying. 52 pounds a megawatt hour, uh, 550,000. The influence of the RHI on that, um, think back to that table before, um, the RHI income in this case is going to be exactly the same because it's still the same amount of heat output. So 340,000 you're going to get from the RHI. That has a significant effect on your costs. Um, with your wood chip, it comes down to that you're saving yourself something like uh, 40, 48,000 pounds, 44,000 pounds, whereas, um, sorry, saving against 100% gas. That's not right, is it? Yeah, oh, yeah, sorry, looking at the wrong one. Yeah, wood chip 210,000. Over the, the straw, it's 512,000 compared to. And that's a saving figure, not a, a total cost figure. The other things that you mustn't forget, though, and as you can see, um, are quite quite large costs. Daily operation, let's say it's an hour a day, which seems to be fairly typical for um, speaking to these people who've installed the system. And that includes things like fuel loading, daily checks, at emptying, that sort of thing. Um, you're going to have to have a guy with a telehandler if you're loading Heston bales onto a conveyor, and you know it all takes a little bit of time. Twenty-five pounds an hour—that's nearly ten thousand pounds a year that you've got to add on to your operating costs that you'd have over and above a gas system. Maintenance. Once they're installed and all the teething problems are, are, are have been got over, actually the maintenance on these isn't isn't too arduous. Um, again, t um, talking to people who've installed these systems. One day a month seems about realistic, um, plus a few spares for bits that have got broken, bits that need replacing. I've estimated there three, and a, three to five thousand pounds a year. Annual servicing. No one's again. No, no one can come up with any hard and fast numbers for this. Yet it all depends on the particular boiler um, type that you've installed. Um, but there's some bands there that uh, again the Carbon Trust had some. Um, some figures. Um, I've put an upper limit against these. I said, yeah, it's between 800 and 2,000 for less than a megawatt, and five to 8,000 for greater than three, uh, three and a half megawatts. Um, again, a lot of these systems are still fairly new. A lot of people still finding their feet and, and that sort of thing. So you may well find that one boiler manufacturer quotes you 5,000, the other one quotes you um, significantly more than that. But don't forget about it because it is quite a large cost. One of the other large costs that a lot of people wouldn't immediately realise is electricity. There's a lot more motor, motors and fans and pumps and compressed air for automatic tube cleaning and that sort of thing. Again, rule of thumb figures, 1.5% of the heat energy produced is what you'd be um, requiring in terms of electricity. And as you can see, £20,000 a year at 8, at 8 pence a kilowatt hour. So how do you sort of weigh all these in together and try and come up with a, with a proper financial appraisal of, of what you're doing? Well, one way is with the, the Carbon Trust Biomass Heat Accelerator Calculator, which uh, Daniel probably knows quite well. Um, that is available to use at that website. Um, when you get these presentations, you should be able to click on that link and it'll, and it'll take you there. Um, it is a very comprehensive tool. It goes through a lot of things, establishing heat demands and so on and so forth. But, uh, obviously. Because it's comprehensive, it, it does take quite a bit of time to go through. What I would say is, if you are going to consider using that, make sure you read the user manual because there's a lot of stuff in there and it'll help you get over some of the, the pitfalls in using the system. As part of this, we decided to put together a much simpler calculator, just a, you know, almost a bit like a ready reckoner kind of, a, of an approach, um, which we call the Farm Energy Biomass Economic Calculator. It's a nice slap, snappy title for you. Um, again, it will be available to download alongside the slides um, on the website. It's a lot simpler to use, but obviously, because it's simpler to use, it's a lot less comprehensive than the Carbon Trust one. Um, and I'm going to use that in, in, in the following slides to, to, to show you some of the paybacks of these systems. What you will need is your total energy consumption as of, uh, in terms of annual consumption, as of this year or last year, or an average of the last five years, and some idea of fuel costs. Uh, in terms of what you're paying currently. It's then customizable to see the effect of boiler size, so you can put different boiler sizes in there. You can change the, the percentage of heat that's going to be supplied to your nursery by biomass. 
different fuel types, different costs, O and M, and that sort of thing to come out with with a number at the end. And rather than looking at that on there. So this is this is the front page. This is where you, you put all your fuel costs and, and, and so on and so forth in. Um, so your current heating fuel use come, comes into this box here. Um, different fuel types down here. How much? How many kilowatt hours of gas or how many liters of gas oil? How many tons of coal, etc. And just an average cost um, per unit of per pounds per unit of purchase. So you can see there in this example, I put 450. Uh, sorry, four million, four and a half million kilowatt hours at 2.2 pence, and it cal calculates the final figure. That obviously um, you can then put in some boiler efficiencies, whether you agree or disagree with the, the default numbers in there. Um, anything in a white box you can change. One thing I would say is up here, just our CC nursery area as well. Um, that will give you a total tons of carbon output as well. Then little bit about where you want to go in terms of biomass fuels. Um, how much energy do you think you want to supply from, or you think is likely to be able to be supplied by the biomass system? Um, it's in steps of 5% all, all the way down to zero. Um, put in a biomass boiler efficiency again, it defaults to 85%, but you can change that if you, if you feel that's unrealistic. And then a load of different fuel types, straw, miscanthus, various um, moisture content percent wood chip and wood pellets. If you know how much the, the cost of the fuel is, um, just hit yes on quote received. If not, then there's some, there's some ballpark cost in there. Likely cost a ton, for example, for straw is 55 pounds a ton. Or you can say, yes, someone quoted me 36 pounds a ton for it. And that will give you the total cost of the heating fuel and therefore the, the, the fuel cost saving over running on what you're already using. In terms of capitals and operating and that sort of thing, put in the size of boiler that you want. Again, if you've had a quote for it, if you say yes, you can write the number in. If you say no, it will give you a ballpark <coughs> cost based on that, that curve that I was showing you earlier. Similar thing for heat stores. Um, it will uh, calculate the uh, uh, heat store size that you require based on 50 cubic meters per hectare. Um, and that's all your capital expenditure items in that block there. Operating costs, um, you can put in your electricity unit rate. We've worked it out at 1.5% of, of heat energy use. You'll see this number go up and down as, as you change the percent of heat supplied by biomass. Operation and maintenance, so your daily, your daily checks, etc. Your, your maintenance and some sort of hourly rate as to what you pay this guy that's doing that. Servicing. Quote received, so again, if you say no, then there's some standard figures that, that go in based on the, the table that uh, I showed you earlier. If you say yes, I know what it is, you can just put the number in. And then, very simply, comes out with an economic appraisal at the bottom. Um, totals up your annual operating costs, your, to your total capital costs, what it's worth to you. Now, if you've selected that you're eligible for RHI, which if it's a new system, it will be, It'll put a figure for the value of the RXI to you in there. Uh, but that's obviously based on the, the proposed, not the proposed rates, on, on what we think it's going to be. So as soon as we know, we'll, we'll update the table so that we've got some accurate figures in there. But at the moment, it's based on, on that second table of rates that I showed you. And just calculates a simple payback, tons of carbon saved, and the cost per ton of carbon saved, which may be useful for any loan application or, or something that you might be doing. So as I said, we'd, we'd work through a couple of examples um, in terms of what the paybacks and, and so on would be. Um, this is using Tim's theoretical uh, five-hectare nursery again. Um, 
basically the bottom line is once you take into account all the costs um, the saving against uh, using 100% gas comes out at about that, that amount um, you add in the influence of RHI um, and you're saving that amount over using gas alone how does that affect the paybacks well let's say the system this 3 megawatt system was uh, including the cost of a heat store is £542,500 to install even without RHI the payback of the system comes down to about 4 years with RHI significantly less uh, just over a year if we don't take quite so ro a rosy view of it let's say that we can only use 40% of, um, of our heat demand from, from biomass again £62,000 saving before the RHI, the influence of the RHI. This is using straw now. Um, or with the influence of the RHI, 231000 which let's say the install cost this time is 480 because you haven't had to put a heat store in. Payback without RHI, 7.8 years, nearly 8 years. But still with RHI, still looking quite rosy at just over 2. And bear in mind, I mean, this, uh, my theoretical notion, if you like, is that uh, it's based on a, a smart video in the ocean, 500 kilowatt hours per square metre per hour. So, for the ornamental or bedding plant growers among you, know, your, consu sorry, your, your consumption is going to be a lot lower than that if you're, if you're a bedding plant or what have you, grower. Similarly, yeah, you know, that's, that 40% is arguably on the generous side when you're thinking about the implication of CO2 enrichment. Well, either way, I mean, looking at numbers like that, if the RHI comes in around about what we're expecting, even if we take a, a slightly more pessimistic view of things, it you know, looks reasonably interesting, I suggest. Has anyone got anything they would like to question, query, or, or add to that? Okay. At uh, the beginning of the day, you started off with a, a graph showing uh, four scenarios on gas prices. Have you got one of those scenarios for uh, wood and straw as well for the next coming years? Well, no, I guess that's really what, I mean, what Glyn was saying is he wrapped up. No, thanks. Uh, <laughs> no, it's, 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 it's difficult. It really depends a lot on the take-up of, of the technology. And um, until we see what's in that RHI document, in the small print, uh, then I, I'm, I'm not going to predict what, you know, even attempt to predict what, um, what those... Prices may be over even the, the minimum term. It's, it's, it's almost impossible. Uh, if it's very beneficial, then there is going to be pretty fast take up. If the RHI uh, system pans out, as we think, it's a set pot of money um, which is there for subsidy, and if take up's very quick, they're going to come back and revisit it after a period of time and reset those bands. So the first in, I'm going to have get the most benefit because once you're once you've got that rate you you've got it for 15 years guaranteed uh, so there's there's an incentive for people to pile in to be in that first tranche of people to, to get get the projects in and I really don't know particularly given this financial climate you know how 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 quickly people are going to uh, to pile in and what the effect is on supply and demand uh, and prices that's, a, that's an interesting point that you just raised. There's what, something like 870, sorry, 870 million in earmark for the RHI over 15 years. You have several of these 340,000 pounds a year payments out. That's that's going to mop up quite a big chunk of that. Um, and as I say, we, we were discussing that I think last night and, and last week that you get several of these piling in right at the very beginning, and then suddenly the uptake is there. It's huge in terms of how much money has been taken out of the system they're going to have to review. Yeah, but I, th I think <clears throat> perhaps where you're coming from is that if you like the, the security of a fairly large investment you might make in kit, and, and if you know, two years down the line the price goes, goes against you, as it were, I guess that, that ties into what Glyn's was saying about 
going into essentially longer term supply contracts with your fuel supplier. You know, if it, if you know the answer is as you know, rosy as that that suggests, then yet yeah, to enter into something that's got a more of a firm price in the next three years that may be at a premium to this year's price is the sensible and safer business decision to make. And I get no, that's just it's like any other commodity that you might buy from when you sit down to decide to buy all your fertilizer for this year just at this very moment because you think the price is right or, or, or what have you. It's, it's just all it's the same business decision at the end of the day. There are additional premiums benefits, you might call them, um, to going to, to a renewable heating system. Um, they are quite handily considered zero CO2 under emissions under the EU ETS, the climate change levy if those are in, in a CCA, and under the CRC. Um, I don't know how many of you are going to be affected by CRC. I guess most of you who are of that size will already be in a, in a climate change agreement. Um, we've got some green credentials for your, for your clients. Maybe you're going to be protected a little bit from energy price volatility. Obviously, there is still a bit of a fossil fuel um, element to chipping wood or harvesting straw, or what have you. But be protected from from the big volatility in, in terms of fuel costs. And of course, yeah, let's have some local benefits as well. If you get your fuel locally, then you're helping the local the local farmer or the entrepreneur with a wood chipper. So just to sum up the, the, the end, of, end of that formal sort of presentation bit, um, the RXI does seem to make the project viable or even more viable depending on, on your financial criteria. Uh, again, I'll just reiterate, it isn't yet confirmed. We will know in 22nd of February or maybe April or, or whenever. Um, but as soon as we have detail of that, we will um, publish it um, by the, by the Grosso's website um, via some sort of update just to let you know that things have happened and, and what what the benefits of the RXI are going to be. Um, as you can see, fuel costs are, are key to the, to the system, uh, making it um, making e making it economically economically viable. Um, again, I'll just reiterate: don't forget to factor in all these other things. Um, I think the combination of that lot um, comes to about thirty thousand pounds in terms of the, um, some of the systems we were just showing you now. And of course, you can just use that little helpful calculator to, to determine how viable the system is to you, if you'd like to do so. If there are no more questions on, on that section, what I'm going to move, just move on to is just looking at some, uh, or say some, three greenhouse businesses that have, that have actually done this. Uh, we're going to look at LF Geeters, who is um, a 1.6 hectare um, producer of cut flowers, who's gone to straw. Delfland Nurseries, who um, do a bit of plant raising and that sort of thing, who've gone to wood chip. And the Oyster Nurseries, again, I think they still grow quite a lot of Alstomeria, um, who've also put in a wood chip boiler. It's just a bit of technical detail about uh, the LF Geeta system. It's a, a 1.2 1 megawatt linker system. Um, it's got a Dan Stoker um, combustion chamber and heat exchanger but the the, um, the business end is it like the, the burner and and the straw topper and, and the delivery system are all linker um, that's not a very good picture of the boiler because you can't get far enough away to get a decent picture um, but i guess that's as high as me isn't it so it gives you some idea of scale um, quite handily when i went there a few years ago it was on sat down and this is what it looked like on the inside you know, in the middle of Cleaning that out, they've had a bit of a problem with clinker build up. Um, just a couple of technical details about it it's got automatic tube cleaning, it's got the shotgun effect tube cleaning that, uh, that Matt was talking about earlier. Um, to be honest, once you're outside the boiler house and a little bit away from it, you don't actually hear it. Um, it does give you a bit of a fright when you're standing about there, like we did last, last week. These are burning what we call Heston bales, they're 550 kilo straw bales. They're manually loaded onto a conveyor system that holds 15 bales, which is enough for about uh, 18 to 20 hours of, of burning at, at full output. Um, the bales, um, the conveyor is automatic. The bales are loaded um, at the beginning of the day and they steadily make their way down, down this conveyor into this straw topper at the end. This is the, the business end of the straw topper. You can't really see, but there's a load of whirring blades inside there that, that top it up into about that sort of a size. 
that's then blown through into the um, into the, the, uh, the fuel delivery system, the, the stoker auger, or it's actually a fan in this case, so, so at the boiler end. LF Geeters installed a 140 cubic meter heat store, um, understood the importance of having one of them to make the best use out of their boiler. They managed to get that uh, second hand from Holland, I think it was about £13,000 worth. Um, it was apparently very interesting getting it into site and getting it around some tight corners and, in, and framing it in there. But it's in, um, very well insulated, put a thermal camera on it and there's not very much uh, heat coming off it at all. And just a final bit of what you know, that they had to do for the system, they had to put a, a big portal frame building up. Um, this is essentially the fuel store where all the Heston bales are kept. Um, it holds about three, three to four months worth of, of fuel storage. In just after harvest, all of this land surrounding is, is, um, is, is turned to straw for them really in the end. Um, it comes in on trailers straight off the field, tip it into the store. Uh, fills the store up now. Come January time, they're now beginning to get the straw merchant coming back and delivering them lorry loads of straw on a regular basis but to, to get that, that store filled back up again. Had to put in some hard standing, obviously, for the, um, for the lorries to turn around. Had to buy a materials handler. Again, they bought that one second hand just to be able to move the bales. Quite a handy thing as material handlers and you know, all sorts of uses after, after just loading straw, apparently. That bit there. That's the ash bin that they unload on a regular basis. Uh, load every day, in fact. So typical sort of operation, um, check the clinker. They don't really have any clinker problems since the very beginning when they had a few problems and they made a slight modification to the boiler and just changed the, the, the parameters of the delivery air, how that was, you know, the volume that was being delivered, etc. And it's been running perfectly happily for the last four years now. I think it's four seasons. Fourth winter. Fourth, fourth winter now. Um, they're now running on rake straw, so slightly different to the wheat straw that, straw that it was commissioned on. There's a, a few little foibles, so they've had to change the straw chopper slightly, they put different meshes on to make the straw come through better. Um, just change, you know, tweak the delivery air a little bit just to make it burn, but in reality, not too many problems. Um, they did have a couple of teething problems with the straw chopper right at the very beginning, uh, a little bit of friction. <coughs> Cause a little bit, little bit of heat in, in the wrong place, but that was sorted out through a bit of a, a redesign and understanding of how the system actually worked. So just to, to see what, how these, how the economics of this um, work, I'm not going to run through the, go through the calculator all over again. Um, but the system cost just over um, 450,000 to install. Um, previously to uh, the system going in, they were using a, uh, four and a half million kilowatt hours of gas, uh, which is in fact the, the one I was showing earlier. Um, this system produces about 90% of their heat demand. They've still got the gas boilers in to run as backup. They still run on the odd occasion when the when the outside temperatures dip below the, the comfort zone. Um, burning about 874 tons. Um, to produce that, that amount of heat. As I said, the system, actually now it's wrong, it wasn't 450, it was 370, wasn't it? Was that right? No. Um, <coughs> just looking at the financials of this then, um, you looking at it, 90% straw, um, or the 90% of our heat that will be produced by straw. Um, it's worth to them £43,934 a year um, estimate. I don't know why I put the four pounds in. Um, they are unfortunately they're ineligible for the for the RHI because it went in whenever it went in. Um, having said that, if they were eligible, obviously it would be worth just over hundred thousand to them. Which is a bit unfortunate, really, because if you look at the paybacks on the system, install cost of 283, um, without the RHI, it's going to be about seven years. Um, with the RHI, it would have been under three. However, um, their fuel costs now for straw are roughly what they were paying for gas four years ago. So it's protected them a lot from that, from that fuel price, from that gas price increase. Um, and as uh, Mr. Geeta was saying last week, 
without it, they probably wouldn't still be trading. It's helped their business carry, carry on forward. So, from their point of view, it's been a very positive thing to have installed. A slightly different approach now. This is uh, this is Delft and their three, um, the plant raisers I was talking about earlier. Um, they've installed in their third season now a 900 kilowatt Gillies wood chip boiler. Um, this has no heat store attached to it because um, they couldn't afford to do so at the time. Um, and they've essentially tried to fit it all, all into an existing building, the, the existing boiler house. So that bit there, it's just not a particularly great photo, but that's a wood chip store of about one night's capacity, um, which they fill in of, of a morning, obviously, before they, before they go of an evening. Um, this actually fitted in the footprint of, the, of a redundant heavy fuel oil boiler, so they've, you know, they've had to put a concrete pad in and that sort of thing, but they haven't had to do any sort of any building works um, you know, in terms of an extra shed or anything like that. The wood chip itself, um, as it's delivered, is actually kept outside. Um, there's a nice picture of it frozen over with snow. Um, and they literally just drive up to that every every time they need filling and tip it into the into the wood chip store. Yeah, I mean the, the picture is slightly unfair. It was just before Christmas, so they had, they were having they are fortunate in having regular deliveries of, of wood chips, so they haven't got to worry about big storage and and, and that sort of thing. So it's not that sort of like a some extra loads to see them through Christmas basically but more often than not there is a relatively small amount stood outside of so their unique position if you like that was they were could do because of how easy their fuel deliveries were because there's um, you know, slight slight difference really in terms of operating um, or the way they operate it uh, typically one and a half hours a day they, they require for putting the fuel in and taking it away and that sort of thing. Again, a few teething problems at the beginning. Fuel chip quality is their main problem. They've taken the rough with the smooth long enough now. Um, they're, gonna, they're in the process of specifying you know, what wood chip they actually want from their fuel suppliers rather than ending up with what they get. Um, but again, a very positive experience mostly. And uh, as Mr. Overwater says, it's, again, it's kept him in business. He's doing what he's doing. Um, Again, I put them through my, my biomass fuel calculator. Um, their heating costs now, you know, their, their heating fuel is saving them something like 80, 87,000 pounds a year in terms of what it would have cost them had they been running on HFO all that time. They, they previously were on, on heavy fuel oil. So they're currently paying, let's say, 100, it's only supplying about 55% of their heating demand. Um, but yet they're paying 140 odd thousand for their heating fuel as opposed to 230,000 at current rates. Again, not eligible for the RHI, largely because of when it went in three seasons ago. Um, install cost of 180,000, um, something like 22,000 pounds a year operating costs. Um, it's worth to them, um, once you take all of those factors into account, about 70, 71,000. Again, with the influence of the RXI, it would be worth near 140. Which, when you work back on the install cost of 180,000, paybacks are pretty short. Uh, 2.8 years, even without the influence of the RXI, 1.3 with it. And they are in the process of thinking about putting a heat store in, I believe, just to make up that uh, percentage and get out from their biomass boiler. Final system, really. Um, I might just ask Matt just to describe this system in a bit more detail, so because he, he knows it far better than I do. Yeah, it's a 500 kilowatt wood, wood chip boiler. Um, at the time, the boiler was uh, not really big enough for the for the site, but budget stated that that was really as large as uh, as it was going to, going to go. So that left us with the uh, with the task of basically squeezing as much out of that 500 kilowatt boiler as we could, which was the reason for putting the such a large um, heat, heat heat storage in there. Uh, pretty much that boiler is fired up at the beginning of the season and it will it, run flat out until until the end of the season. Apart from uh, apart from when he when he shuts down just to uh, do his cleaning. Um, originally designed around uh, using 500 tons of, of wood fuel a year. Um, but in, in real terms, now that he's been up and running, put that in uh, in 2000, back end of 2008, 
is now going through, I think, around about a thousand tons of, of wood chip a year. Because what he was finding was he can put more heat into the nursery, um, get a better, better yield on the on his crop, and still save money on um, on uh, on his uh, compared to his oil cost. Thank you. <coughs> yeah, uh, I spoke to to, to Brian uh, of the Noise Nursery, so prior to coming here, and yeah, about 1,200 tons he reckons he's going to have used this year, which uh, as you can see is nearly. It's two and a half times of, of what it was established at or, or designed to be at. Um, he's now in the process of thinking of putting in another 500 kilowatt boiler, um, possibly to take advantage of the RHI for that particular system if the, if the, um, if the regulations will allow it, um, to give him that extra capacity that he always needed. As you say, it was, you know, wasn't really big enough for his nursery at the time. It's still not big, really big enough now. Um, for those of the people that are worried that they need backup systems, he hasn't burnt any oil at all. He, this system actually provides him 100% of his heat requirements. As I say, it runs 24 hours a day, all the way from the beginning of the season to the end of the season, using that uh, 60 cubic meter um, buffer store to take, a, um, to take away the peaks and troughs. Yeah, Eight thousand seven hundred in a year. It's a, you can see the load factor on that. Um, there's there's very few bits of automation on the on this particular boiler. I doubt it's got automatic started or automatic emission. So it did have it. All right, okay. There's one one system that doesn't need it. <laughs> but it doesn't have automatic uh, tube cleaning or not, no automatic BS. Right. Okay, so he has to spend thirty minutes a day emptying the ash and, and doing the checks and de-ashing it. Um, he's got a fuel store that's big enough to two, for two to three days worth of, of heat, so he only spends about three hours a week fueling it rather than, than the seven that some other people are doing. Um, on top of that, a bit of a shutdown period every uh, one day a week, just sort of general cleaning and maintenance and that sort of thing. He actually buys his, uh, his wood in the round or his slab wood um, and gets it tipped on site. He's got a contract tipper, he tried three contract tippers and ended up with the best one. Uh, it takes about a day and a half to fill a 500 ton store. Um, and he reckons he's got the cost down to about three to four pounds a ton tip. Um, but that's really going for it, he reckons. Um, in three years it's been running, I think he said he's replaced one fan. So you can see they're fairly, fairly robust and reliable. Again, it's a binder, it's a binder 500 kilowatts. Just looking at the costs of that, what I've done in this case is I've spec'd it out as, as what he anticipated he was going to use and given you the paybacks and also done it for what he's actually doing at the moment. So anticipated it was going to replace 130,000 litres of gas oil consumption. Um, again, supplying 100% of the, of the heat demand and let's say 80% efficiency, it might be slightly higher than that. Anticipated to use 400, 400 and a bit tonnes of, of wood per year at 35% moisture content. That would have given him, given him a fuel cost saving of £43,000 an odd. For an install cost of 250 or 240000 all in, including the building and taking out the old system and, cutting, and, and splicing the new system in. Um, that gives a payback, including operating costs of 17000 a year, somewhere around nine and a half years. Um, Now, these numbers are a little bit wrong because there's, there's a little bit of an influence in there of uh, offsetting other costs. Um, but if you look at that in terms of doing what he's doing at the moment, using nearly uh, 1,200 tonnes of wood chip, um, which has allowed him yeah, increasing, slightly increasing cropping area, slightly increased production, growing higher temperature and higher value crops, it's all been positive to him. Um, the numbers look, look very different. So if you're offsetting what is equivalent to 380,000 litres of gas oil, um, the fuel cost saving is nearly £106,000. Um, the paybacks on that, without the RHI, comes down to about three years, just under three years. It's, it's worth noting he also got a capital grant. Um, and within the RHI, we very much expect that you know, it's a grant or the RHI. The chances are you won't be able to have both. Uh, 
there has been some uh, clarification on that and what we think is going to happen is that any system put in after, is it the 14th of June or is it the 14th of June, 14th of June 2009 will be eligible for the H RHI. So even if it's gone in before now, you can claim the RHI if the system comes in. But if you've had a capital grant, um, if that is e, EU money, yeah, yeah, then uh, you, 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 you've got the option to pay the grant back and take the RHI. It's all about double subsidy, uh, and that's what we think will uh, will happen. But again, until we actually see it all written down, you know, we've got to take that caveat that we, we, there may be surprises that we're not actually down the road. Yeah, I think the, the key fact for, for the nice nurses was actually the, the impact it's had on the business. The fact that it has allowed being a cheaper heat source it has allowed them to change their business quite significantly that they couldn't have done before. So there were, you know, and the chances are that that impact is worth as much, if not more, than the fuel cost saving. So it's a, it's a, it's a useful extra element. Yes. Yeah. The, the, there are criteria that this equipment has to meet, but yeah, the, the, a large part of it, if not all of it, should be eligible for enhanced capital allowances. So you can reclaim the capital costs in year one or, or a big chunk of it. So yeah, there's a. Agriculture and horticulture can have, I was forget, is it 20 or 30,000, John? I can't remember. Uh, oh, sorry. 20. C yes, can, have, can get an interest free loan from the Carbon Trust of up to £20,000. So when you're looking at the sort of numbers we're talking about with these installations, it's not going to go far. That's because agriculture and horticulture, because of single farm payments and all sorts of things like that, are bundled in, although a lot of horticultural businesses don't get it bundled in together and it comes under EU state aid rules, that's what limits the amount that the audience here can get as interest free loans compared to, I mean this, this Stansted Park got a, an interest free loan off the Carbon Trust for that and, and I imagine it could have been, well, could well have been the, the lion's share of the cost of this installation, you know, unfortunately you can't get that similar amount. No, not in, the, not in that simple thing, wouldn't it? Because of you know, the cost of capital, different people varies to whatever. So that's you know, for you to take whichever direction you wish. But I mean, you just it's that calculator of hours is very it's it's very simplistic. It's intended to for any of you to look at and go, has this got a hope or not? If it's now actually you know, and if you're coming up with figures, if that's coming up with figures of three to five years, the chances are you'll go actually we need to be looking properly. That's that's very sort of like a first filtering. If you like, that's, that's the, its intended purpose. Okay. Um, actually, that that pretty much wraps up what I have to say on 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 these three nurseries. Um, you can see there, there are nurseries that have actually gone out there and done it. It's perfectly possible. It works. In the case of the noise nurseries, they don't have a well, they do have a backup system, but they haven't used it for three years, um, and it's been a very positive experience for them. I spoke to John Alvavorda not long ago and he said he changed supplier on his wood chip because they overnight they put his price up 20 percent. Mm. Uh, visiting plant raisers, uh, which a uh, company you well know, they've turned off their uh, uh, wood chip boiler because it's cheaper at the moment to run on natural gas. Well, is it wood chip or wood pellet? No, plant raises is wood pellet. And so, you know, if you see in those figures that John had up there, you know, the cost of wood pellet compared to the cost of gas, you know, yeah, you just wouldn't do it. So, yeah, to turn it off, it was the right thing to do. I'd reiterate that I should never have gone in in the first place, really, the dedicated wood pellet system. <laughs>